Church of the Nazarene. I am Pastor Cliff, Pastor Dave and I, my associate. We have been uh, switching off on doing this. I have a great show tonight because it just isn't all me. My sister, Pearl, does a lot of music with her guitar in the room and she recently sent my mother a, uh, and dad a little thing because you can't, they didn't want to, mom and dad are getting up there and didn't want to visit them or get them sick with all the stuff going on. And she sent them a video and I asked if I could share it. Now this isn't going to be pretty tonight, but I think you'll be able to hear it. This is the technology of Pastor Cliff, just so you know. So let's hear this. She's addressing my parents in this video. Here we go. Oh, I got this. I thought I started it. Pearl cut it off short. She didn't finish her video, but it was a good song. We're going to hear from her in a little bit. That is my sister Pearl from her home in Menominee, Wisconsin. She is the second to the youngest. And, uh, you know, when I was, we have Dave and Jody here with us. We're going to talk to them in a little bit. But when my sister knew I first became a pastor, I was pastoring in Manoa, Wisconsin. And one day my sister Pearl called me and said, you're a preacher. I want to get your opinion on something. And so I, I gave it. And she goes, oh, what do you know? You're just my snot-nosed little brother. Anyway, I have wonderful, wonderful guest with us tonight. Hi, everybody. Dave and Jody Her, Say hello. Hello. How many years have you guys been married? It'll be 25. Five. 25. It was 25. We're going to talk more about that. Jody, tell us what you're going to share with us, or tell us why you're going to share with us what you are. Um, I was quite old by the time I became a Christian and believed in Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I can tell you a little more about it. Okay, but you have something in the book you're going to share yes. with us. Tell us why, that's what I was getting. Tell us why you want to share this. Okay, I, I was fe feeling kind of down the other day, and I... I just, I was cleaning and I was going through my bookcases and I found this book. Someone had given it to me. I never opened it up. I never looked at it. And I went and I sat on the couch and I opened it up to the first page. And it filled me. And it told me that God is with me and that I don't need to worry. And that this will soon pass. And I know other people out there feel that way too. So I would like to share. You go right ahead. Called God's Inspirational Promise Book. And we are going to talk about courage. Don't be afraid because I have saved you. I have called you by my name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. 
When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flames hurt you. This is because I, the Lord, am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand, and I tell you, don't be afraid. I will help you. And the third one is, how great is your goodness that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you have given to those who trust you. You do this, do this for all to see. You protect them by your presence from what people plan against them. You shelter them from evil words. And on the final page, could you use some courage? Are you backing down more than you are standing up? Jesus scattered the butterflies out of the stomachs of his nervous disciples. We need to remember that the disciples were common men given a compelling task. Before they were the stained glass saints in the windows of cathedrals, they were somebody's next door neighbors trying to make a living and raise a family. They weren't cut from theological cloth or raised on supernatural milk, but they were an ounce more devoted and they were afraid, and as a result, did some extraordinary things. Earthly fears are no fears at all. Answer the big question of eternity, and the little questions of life fall into perspective. Let your words of hope and the promise of a glorious future in your kingdom give me hope and courage for today, Father. You are with me now, as you will be throughout all eternity. Amen. You know, we've talked about it. It seems like if this situation going on in our country is a 10 out of 10, I think we need to take it seriously. We don't get people sick, but the media makes it a 20. And so many people are wrapped up that they forget we serve a big God. Very big God. Amen. Yep. And he is in control. So. Amen. This wasn't the same. Yes. We're coming back to Dave and Jody here shortly. And let me just get my camera back up here so I can see my beautiful face. There we go. Um, Today was my anniversary, and Penny and I celebrated it by an Arby's drive through I tried something I never tried before. I'm playing you a couple songs that my sister sent my parents today. Hey, by the way, type in on the screen any prayer requests for later, and later after Dave and Jody are done talking about their testimony and what God means to them, maybe you have some comments or encouragement for Dave and Jody. Don't tell Dave that he needs to get a different shirt or anything. No, don't, no, do, don't do that. But we're going to play it. My sister sent this to my, um, oh, my mom and dad. And like I said, this isn't pretty. Uh, let me get this to the beginning. All right. This is my sister, Pearl Larrabee Homestead. That's, she goes, she hyphenates her name. And there we go. There we go. Let's get this on here. I am so technologically advanced, it's, it's scary. So here we go. Hey, parents. No, this is not your son, Cliff, preaching. This is me, Pearl, from Smallerville, singing, or at least pretending to sing and play. Uh, down in my art room, which is now my studio or my music room. And I thought I'd try to play a song for you. We'll see how this goes. So if you want to sing along, go for it. If thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His
And that was my sister Pearl and singing something for my parents. She recorded and I said, can I share that tonight on the Sunday Night Praise? And uh, like I said, it's not pretty technology, but I think you could hear it fairly well through there. Hey, we got Brad and Dave and Don and Marge and my wife, maybe Autumn in the background saying, I hear my dad enough. Got my cousin Cliff Tickler that don't live far down the road tuning in. Uh, and uh, thank you for the wish for happy anniversary. I want to tell you one more story about my sister, Pearl. I got to tell you guys this day, you know, being the older sister, I, I had light eyebrows as a kid. And so she started a rumor on the bus that I shaved my eyebrows. And everybody in school would tease me. They'd come up and go like this. So thank you, Pearl. I really appreciate that. Hey, before we go to my wonderful time with Dave and Jody tonight, this Wednesday night, Pastor Dave will be here with me. We're going to try it by Zoom, and he's going to lead the study, and next week I'll lead the study. And then the first Wednesday night of May, as long as the shutdown continues, I don't know how long this is going to go on, um, Harriet will be here with our missions lesson. Doesn't she do a great job? Yes. Harriet does a wonderful job. I feel like i got an audience here. here all right, I should need to get an applause machine, you know. Yeah, all right. Harriet does a good job. Let's clap, all right. And then the, the rest of the three the rest of the three Wednesday nights, Pastor Dave and I, Cash, my associate pastor, will be here studying together the Book of John. We're going to go through the Book of John. I'm going to get the, the website out to you. I don't have it. Maybe you can text it in, Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave is an extremely gifted writer. Oh, applause. Okay, this is great. I got to do this with the audience more often. He's an extremely gifted writer, and he has a website. Where he, where he writes not just short stories, but Bible studies. So I'd like you to check that out. I'm going to have Dave get that to you because I don't, I don't have it off the top of my head. And then also, don't forget about Pastor Dave and I are doing this. We may continue this as a ministry, switching off on this program, kind of in place of a Sunday night service called Sunday Night Praise. A lot of churches don't have Sunday nights. Our culture has changed. Dave and I are going to switch off every week. Brad will be here with me. Brad Hanson. Let's give Brad a hand. He deserves it. Yeah, that's for you, Brad. And Brad's going to be here the first Sunday night of each month, tentatively, to do his study on First Thessalonians with me. I have a great time with Brad. Your hat's still here, by the way, Brad. You never took it home from Wednesday night. And then the second and fourth Wednesday nights, Pastor Dave will be here, and I'll be here the third Sunday night on Sunday Night Praise. And uh, Pastor Dave Frazier, the former pastor of this church, will be with me on the third Sunday night in May. And whenever we do have service, we have mission service and singspirations here at the church. Them programs will be pre-recorded. But we have been re able to reach so many people. Yeah. Let's give people a hand for tuning in, all right? And also, if you go under the Church of the Nazarene on YouTube, I have download. I'm this week in the process of downloading some of our short Sunday night praises. You can only get like 10 minutes at a pop, so I have to cut them up because I don't have the equipment to get all these things jam-packed into one. And so I'm going to be downloading some of Dave's and mine Sunday night praise services. And uh, I couldn't get Dave loaded up. Something was wrong with him. I don't know if he's too hard on the YouTube. I couldn't get him, so I got to work on that a little <laughs> A little bit. I got to be careful when I'm turning this thing because if I turn it, I shut things off. There's those beautiful people. I give them a hand now. I, I, you know, we have so many wonderful people in our church, but Dave and Jody, you are among those of all of them. And I, if you have any comments tonight, you have any questions for Dave and Jody, and just want to encourage them. Dave knows everything about woodworking. Look at this. Look at what he built me. I can put my phone in there. <laughs> How much is that? Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine and free shipping. Free shipping. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to just. They're going to share their testimony. I don't really know where to start. Jody, just we'll start with you. Just kind of start off what you can share online. What you like to share about your growing up and how you came to the Lord. However you want to say it. Take your time. 
well, I grew up, grew up, and my mom and dad were in their mid forties, and they were Catholic, and we did church on a regular basis when I was young. And then as I got older, of course, the businesses that they owned, they worked in a post office plus they owned a resort. That led them to being busy seven days a week. And I didn't get to church as often as I thought I should. Well, as I became a teenager, I really lost my interest in, in God. It, it was just, I wasn't going to church anymore because my parents were busy. And if I did go, I'd have to go with my brother, and that wasn't always the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it bothered me for years why I didn't go back then. But it took 40 years of my life before I met a woman, and it was Dave's mother. And she was a very kind lady, and she just praised Jesus in a way that I never saw that before. Amen. And she was soft-spoken. She never tried to judge me. She just kept telling me, Jesus loves you. And if you give him the chance, you can love him as much as he loves you. So I continued talking with her until basically the day she passed away. And she's the one that got me back into church. Um, I did become a member of a church. I had never been a member before. And basically, without her, I don't know where I would be today. And considering all the facts, when we moved up here, I found a real love for my church. They found a love for you. And I just, it has just brought me closer to the Lord. Um, I, I depend on God for so many things. And Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And amen. And Dave, you grew up in the Church of the Nazarene. I grew up in the Church of the Nazarene in a very loving Christian home. Every time the church doors is open, we would be there Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, every revival. Um, we were a very loving family. And then... <clears throat> After I got out of school, I went into service and come home after a couple of years and went to Madison and I met this girl and my loving mother says, well, I don't think you should marry her, but you know how kids are. <laughs> I knew better than she did. So we were married for 19 years. It just didn't work out right. So met Jody and we've been going to church been going to church ever since so um, <clears throat> we love it up here we love the church uh, we become very very connected with the people up here and we just love it up here so and so when you guys made a decision in your lives to repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come in and believe only unto him salvation what a difference it was it was it was a big difference yes with all the things going on in our world I can imagine this has been a very I was more like a prodigal son for a long time. Mm -hmm. And my parents and family and a lot of uh, church members in Beirut did a lot of praying for me. But I did uh, see the light. And, and we, we appreciate your service. You were in Vietnam too. Vietnam. In what years? Uh, 60, uh, 70 to 71 over there. And God kept you safe. God kept me safe. No, I never shot anybody. Never got shot at. Well, we had an incoming one night that landed uh, about 100 yards from my barracks at night. Took three helicopters out, but that was the closest that uh, it was ever got to me. So I, I praise the Lord for protecting me over there. Amen. So what have you guys, what, what, what kind of hobbies do you have? Tell us about your hobbies, Jody. Some of us in the church know, but she is very gifted, folks. I love to craft. It's something I wanted to do for a long part of my life because I always enjoyed making things or doodling or anything like that. And once we moved up here, I knew that I would finally have the time to do it. And starting with very little things, and I've now moved to bigger things, 
Um, everything I make is hand sewn. Um, it's from scratch. It's stuffed. It's yeah. <laughs> it's painted. It's whatever it needs to to make it. In. Well, I told Jody when the time is right, and she does it. Fills up. To, we're going to have a, a, a Sunday night show where we can see some of what the Lord has gifted her. Dave, besides making cell phone holders, <laughs> what kind of woodworking do you do? Oh, I do a little Halloween stuff. I do Easter stuff. Um, I got a wooden fence from our great pastor that he didn't want. So I made a... I wish I'd have brought a piece of that and he redid it. <laughs> I planed it down and I made uh called a plant stand for outside. And, uh, oh, I don't know. I kind of puts around a little bit of everything. Jody will see something in a magazine. Like today she saw something about a candle holder. So now she wants me to make some candle holder for her. So whenever she comes up with stuff out of a magazine, I try to try to make so. Well, tell us now about your children. You each have a son and, and grandkids, so. Yes, uh, my son is in California and he works in LA. And most of the time he can work from his home, which is a good thing right now. And his wife, Amanda, she's been doing some oh, food food drives and, mm -hmm. and making food for the homeless and things like that. And that has been a blessing to her. And Dylan, he is just turned 15. He will be a sophomore next year. And Jocelyn, I believe that she's 11. 11. Wow. And she'll be 12. And they're doing great. And I miss him terribly. But he does call me. And when we talk, we talk for at least an hour to an hour and a half. Tell us about your family on your side with your kids. Well, my uh, son is Dennis. Uh, he lives in DeForest. He's married to uh, Carrie. She's a, a teacher up in Partyville. Uh, I think it's high school. I think she teaches sophomore, I think. And my son is working for some chemical company that uh, sells chemical to big companies. Uh, he sells to one factory here in town. Um, he sells to a place in Wanakee. They take pig guts and everything in this chemical and they make Ephraim out of it, this Ephraim to aspirin and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he's, since this uh, pandemic is going on, he sells some kind of alcohol that goes into hand, hand sanitizers. So he's been very, he's very, busy, very man. busy. Uh, they have two daughters. One is four going on five, and one is three. Yeah. So Taylor and Talon, uh, they live in DeForest. We don't see him very much. Uh, he's been up here, I guess, once or twi twice, I guess. But uh, do miss him. But we do talk on the phone every once in a while. So. Um. Just one of them things, I guess. So. Mm. But, but God has blessed you so God, much. Yes. Yeah. So I got blessed with Jody now, and she keeps me in line. I got you. Got tell us how you two kind of met. Now, how did this all go about? I got to hear this. Well, it was a neat story. I owned a bar, and I did the food, and mm -hmm. I we we had had the business. I don't know, just maybe for a year, and put the food in there. And he happened to be the bread man or the bun guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed, I needed a lot of buns. And so he made sure that the product was there and he would take it downstairs in the basement and everything. So that's how we had first met. Well, the bar business is not a fun business to be in. And I probably said a lot of things I never should have said and I've done a lot of things I shouldn't have done. But what is done is done, and I did find Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the bar business is, that is a nasty, nasty thing to be in. Mm -hmm. And he was there when I got my divorce and helped me get through it. And a 
A year and nine months later, we were married. How many years have you been married now? 25. In 25. Fact. I can tell you another story, though, too. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> we, no, no, no. we want people to get to know the people of our church that we're all crazy. No, I, I, went, I went in there one day, and and of course I had to talk to Jody and about the buns and all this stuff. And she come up, and she was very, very, very sad. It looked like she had lost everything in life. And I said, "Well, just just tell me what's going on." Well, my mother's in the nursing home, and her. And they say she might pass away here in the next couple of weeks. And I mean, she was down. She was out. So I sat and talked to her there for a while. And she cheered up a little bit. But then her mother lived for another 18 years. Wow. 18 years. So just just being friendly one day. And just prayers for her. And I can see how the Lord has used you guys in the ministry and touching people's lives and and I know you miss the people here at church, don't you? Do you sure want to send out some love to them tonight? I do. Everybody out there, I miss you. And you have no idea how hard it is not to be in church. And I'm sure that you feel the same way. But I miss each and every one of you. I wish you well. And I pray that you're in God's hands. I feel that God has been good to me. And I'm thankful I found this little book because it's given me encouragement. And I wish you all well and hope we can all see each other soon. You know, every church has a hugger. And we have a lot of huggers in our church. Jody is our lead I, hugger. And I feel like I haven't been able to hug anybody but no. Pastor today. Oh, <laughs> I'm supposed to say that. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I miss everybody, too. I miss I miss Mr. Tripp. Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul, I miss him. I miss uh, Harriet and our coffee hour. I miss Bonnie and Paul and Jim and Marsha. Wade, I miss you too, buddy. I haven't talked to you for a long, long time. I should give you a call here. And Mr. Hanson, you're all right too. Although you uh, did your first Facebook, you're all right though. So you did good. <laughs> did good. So otherwise, I love you guys all and hope this gets over soon and we can get back to normal again. We're going to come back to you guys in a second here. Let me move this camera off these beautiful people. Anyway, if you guys have anything that you want to say to Dave and Jody uh, and let me know. David, put the address up there where his studies can come from. They're on there. I can't read. Welcomevalley.com, and he does a great job. Give a hand, audience. <laughs> One of the things we want to do with, with this program in our church, this is a church, this isn't about Pastor Cliff or Pastor Dave. It's about God's ministry in our church to share what Christ is doing in people's lives and you know, if you would have told me, Dave and Jody, a couple months ago, we're going to do online, I'd say, crazy, that don't interest me. I don't like no. to see myself on camera. <laughs> and even because the light shines off the top, and uh, John even had more hair than me this morning. But the point is, we want to get people to share their testimony, what God is doing. That's why Pastor Dave and I have been praying and talking about continuing this type of program for a while where people can see what God is doing in our midst. And... Uh, Pastor Cash says thank you to both of you for sharing today. It's about the Lord. This whole, if, we're, if we're not reaching people for Jesus, we are wasting our time. I just want to sing a little song, and then we're going to go to prayer with the purse here. And I wasn't going to do this, but I hope I can sing it a cappella. But it, and if you know the part about people need the Lord, you guys harmonize with me. Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries, only Jesus hears. People need the Lord, people need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord, people need the Lord. When will we realize 
that people need the Lord. I know you knew that part, but this is the other verse. We are called to take his life. To a world where wrong seems right, what could be too great a cause for sharing life with one who's lost? Through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear, they must hear the words of life, only you can share. People need the Lord, people need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord, people need the Lord. When will we realize that people need the Lord. Isn't that true? Amen. We're going to go to prayer, Dave and Jody and I. And I want to read what Brad said. Brad said, your church family loves you. Thank you for your testimonies. God's plan is always best and your loving proof. Thank you, Brad. I would put the camera on you, but I can't read Kitty yeah. Corner. Shannon Rogers says, thank you for sharing your testimonies. And my wife writes, we miss all of you too. We love them. We're going to go to prayer. I don't see any prayer requests come up tonight, but I'm going to join Dave and Jody in the prayer corner over here. Move on over there. I don't know if any of you have prayer requests. It was my honor to have you guys. That's okay. They don't need to see me. But it was, there was, we'll move it a little bit. Okay, here we go. There we go. We'll get us all in there. Now we can get in here. Get rid of my bald head there. We want to just pray for our church. And Marsha's been having a lot of back pain, Jody. And why don't you thank God for this night and just pray for Marsha's back and Jim's continued healing. Lord Jesus, we come to you this evening with a thankful heart. And Lord, I'd like to pray for Marsha and her back issues. And I'd also like to pray for Jim. I hope he's healing well. Lord, just touch both of them and let them know that they're loved and they're cared for. And let them know that we all miss them and that we're all praying that we'll all be in church again here shortly. And we ask all these things in your holy name. Dave, would you remember tonight, our church people, in getting discouraged and knowing that we can't control everything, we don't know if everything we're hearing is true or false. We just, yeah. Lord, we want to, we just want to trust you and to be safe and to stay wise and stay close to Jesus. And would you just pray for our church people to be encouraged? Dear Heavenly Father, as we <clears throat> continue in prayer, Lord, first of all, Lord, I want to thank you for all your blessings, for all you've done for us. Lord, you are a living God and you are in control. And Lord, I pray that you'll just be with every one of our church families, Lord. Lift them up, Heavenly Father. I know it's troubling times. Um, Lord, I know I'm down at times too. Uh, Lord, I just pray that whatever we can do, Lord, just to uplift people. And Lord, I know you are in control and you can do it. And Lord, I just thank you and I praise you in your holy name. Amen. Lord, I continue to thank you for these wonderful couple that's here. I thank you, Lord, that they were so open and honest to share and a future Sunday night praises and Wednesday nights or wherever we do it, we're going to have more people sharing what God is doing. Lord, I just pray for Rob and Sherry tonight. Would you encourage them and wrap your arms of love and comfort around them and guide them through this difficult time? Thank you for their faith in you. Lord, I also just pray, Lord, that we don't understand everything that's going on in our world with this coronavirus. But Lord, help us to be safe, to be wise, to stay close to you, to do what we need to do. But Lord, we just pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would give us wisdom to decipher what's true and what's not true. And just to be wise, because we don't have any special insight on what's going on. We just pray for those people, you know, even in this world, but especially our community that are out of work. We pray you'd comfort them and, and lift them up, Lord. And I just pray tonight, Lord, if there is somebody out there that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, they would reach out to you and say, Jesus, I'm sincerely sorry Amen. for my sins. Lord, 
I trust you alone for salvation and you alone to make me the person I ought to be because your spirit is in me. And Lord, may we just enjoy our walk with you. And we just want to be careful. We don't forget to give you the honor and the glory and the power forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer in closing. I have, you know, we've had a lot of compliments on our music on Sunday mornings. And if it's very good. Phil and Carrie recorded Nolan. We got to get Carlton playing too. Both of oh, you boys yes. are gifted in their music and so many gifted. If you want to watch some of the music, uh, they did download an extra thing there after church. It's on the church Facebook page. If you want to watch Nolan and Carrie play together, what a beautiful, beautiful thing that they do together, isn't it? Amen. And uh, Pastor Dave and I will be here on Wednesday night, and then Sunday morning again. That shy John and I will be here for our coffee time. We had a ball this morning. <laughs> we played a game, and uh, and I'm still getting better at, at trying to read all these things that come off the screen. I'm so honored to have you guys tonight. Thank you for being here. It's great. We're going to say pastor. the Lord's Prayer in closing on this Sunday night praise, and we're just going to dismiss then. And so let's say it. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you guys say goodbye while I shut us down here? Goodbye all. Good night. John Boy? Yep. Love you, church family. Yep.